Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off meta video, I'm going to show you why you should be given arc blinding effects a try in the new battleground based contents and even in game content. They get highly overlooked for more stronger and better effects that arc can offer, but with arc 3.0 now available and jolt being super strong, combining both effects into one will allow you to shut down all types of enemies via your weapons, grenades, or simply just your melee. If you have insurmountable skull front and want a fun reason to use them again, then why not give this stylish build a try? To start, you're going to want to have touch of thunder aspect, which allows users to enhance one of the four grenades you have available. And then you want knockout, where critically wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regaining your health. Elite knockout fragment will be your friend here, as this will keep you alive as long as possible while dishing out higher melee damage. One of the core issues with using the arc build is the lack of healing it provides. However, with insurmountable skull fund effects in full action, we can utilize this healing factor along with knockouts increased damage to further support the build. From there, our grenade will be the flashbang grenade that are enhanced and will have the ability to blind targets twice, and our melee, as mentioned earlier, will also proc its blinding effect on melee contact. Everything we do will blind targets and create utter chaos in the making. For the fragments, Spark of Discharge, where Arc Weapon Finder Blows have a chance to create armor traces. Spark of Resistance, where while surrounded, you are more resistant to incoming attacks by 40%. Spark of Shock, where your Arc Grenade jolt targets. And Spark of Beacons, where while amplified, your Arc Special Weapon Finder Blows create a blinding effect. The most important mod to have here is of course the Spark of Beacons Fragment that offers players the ability to constantly create a stream of blinding effects on the target hit by it. Ideally, pairing this with an Arc Trace Rifle, for example, will be the best as they have the bigger reserves and have also been buffed to be more effective in PvE. After that, the Spark of Resistance will help when shoulder charging a lot and make use of our exotic, and then Discharge will grant us energy back, while Shock will further enhance our grenades. It's simply, once we become amplified, 90% of our abilities will become enhanced, and this will be blinding like crazy. For the mods and stats section, both Discipline and Strength will play a big part within the build itself, but your Strength stat will be the main stat that will instigate a lot of fights. At tier 7 to 8, this will help with allowing us to use our melee more often, and also gradually regenerate over time when we use it against a target, and not get killed right after it. With a Skull 4 active, it's a bit of a weird scenario to have your stat high, as Exotic can fully replenish your melee charge again upon final blows. If used against a target that doesn't die in one hit, then this midi charge will go and take time to recover. This is why when you're playing with the stat, you need to understand where and when to use it. Ideally, avoid using it against major and above enemy types as this is where the midi will fail the most. To further help the stat, you can add on the distribution mod to get a 4% ability regen via class ability use, and that should be it in terms of supporting the stat. Discipline at tier 7 is also a good level to stick with, as we'll be using the front of focus mod for that plus 30 towards our current stat, so overall a tier 10 was in action. This should help with reducing the need to use high spiked armor to achieve your goal, as this should be fairly easy to do on your end. Although this is more strength based, the impact induction mod will give us a 20% grenade energy back from damaging a target with a 7 second cooldown. Add on Iron Traces and you get your grenades back fairly quickly outside of the use of weapon perks such as Demolitionist. While you're there, do add on the following armor charge mods. A charged up times 2 will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect them, and having Stacks on Stacks mod will allow us to increase our charge stacks by plus 2 each time we collect an orb of power. From here, you can add on the Harmonic or Arc Cypher mod for creating orbs of power via your weapons and Heavy Handed for creating orbs via your charge made kills. I would also advise you to add on the Arc Weapon Surge mod to enhance your Arc Weapons by 17% with time dilation for that extra 5 seconds on top of our time based mods. And lastly, the Special Finisher mod so that secondary weapons can always have ammo available, as this will be important for the weapon we have selected. Now lastly, the weapons being used will need to be Arc Special Weapon. Now you are free to pick and choose what you like here, and you can also use a Arc Primary as well if you wish. However. You will not get the spark of beacon effect if you do so. For my primary, I have the conditional finality exotic shotgun combined with my secondary weapon, so that we can get more ammo to drop for both special and heavy weapon in use. The weapon is great for inflicting high damage on the more tougher enemies, and can also help with either add clearing via the ignition shot, or with stone champions to ultra down with a stasis shot. If you don't have the following weapon, then a simple SMG would be a good alternative to fit in with the running gun feel being offered. 
The secondary, I've gone with the path of least resistant trace rifle with shoot to loot and vault shot. Although shoot to loot isn't that great for a weapon like this, vault shot on the following weapon is great as you can keep your trigger down, proc vault shot and blinding rounds and watch as a group of enemies become dust. Choosing this weapon allows me to add whatever prime and heavy I like while still retaining the flow of the build while on the move. For example, like having a shotgun in the primary when we run out of secondary ammo. The Cold Heart is also a great weapon to have instead as that weapon has received quite a buff over the given seasons. And in fact, it's probably better to use this instead of what I have just for the benefits alone. Now, although arc for this season isn't offering much with some of the in-game modifiers being offered, the following build doesn't need the use of requirements of such modifiers to enhance our gameplay further. What makes the build interesting is the simple fact of covering a number of key factors when you want to delay enemies' action quickly. Through just our grenades alone, we can blind targets two times for each of the two bounces provided by a grenade, and if we get a kill, this will also jolt targets within the vicinity, causing a mass wipe of any enemy group caught within the blast. If using your grenade aren't good, then the option to use just your melee provides an interesting and fun experience. Doing a charged melee will not only heal you with skull from provided, but also grant you back four melee back from final blows, and also blind targets within your vicinity as well. Then of course you have the ability to trigger more blinding effects via your special weapon, which all seems a bit too much against a simple dreg, but I'm very sure they had this coming for a very long time. What I'm trying to say is that this is a perfect build for those who enjoy AoE lockdown setups that are similar to stasis or void. I haven't seen many people talk about blinding builds at all really, and I just want to show how good doing one will bring you a lot of positive when you link in how strong Ark is now. I do want to try this version now in endgame and DMs as the blueprint is there, however I would need to change up what armor exotic is being used as a shoulder charge isn't that viable in the higher endgame content, especially GMs. Outside of those it could perform well in legendary content if you're looking for testing its power out, but overall the build feels great in any content that has ton of combatants in it and that's where arc subclasses excel the most in. Although this can be said with all subclasses to be fair, but what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I have more stuff like this than I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.